similar parts of um, the brain. Uh, there's a lot of overlap in how we process both visceral disgust and, and moral disgust. Psychopaths, um, they, needless to say, they're, uh, these cold-blooded killers are greatly overrepresented in uh, many of our high security jails. And these individuals show damage to many of the same circuits that are involved in disgust. Another group of individuals, um, although they're not uh, predatory, uh, but people with Huntington's disease, it also damages some of the circuits that are involved in disgust. People with Huntington's disease are, tend not to be empathetic, and they think that this is related to these circuits being damaged, and they're almost unique in that they experience almost no visceral disgust whatsoever. So somebody with Huntington's disease, for example, would think nothing of picking up feces with their bare hands. So there is this sort of very interesting interrelationship, at least in the brain, between visceral and moral disgust. A little known uh, fact is that conservatives um, are more disgust sensitive. There's a huge variation across populations in how disgust sensitive people are. There's actually um, standardized scales that measure, for example, uh, the questionnaire you fill out and will ask you questions about like how revolted you would be if you stepped on dog poop or uh, you know, if you saw a cockroach on pizza or a dirty toilet. And as a result of filling out these questionnaires, they've been able to um, look to see if there's parallels between how disgust sensitive someone is and how conservative they are. And indeed, there is a correlation. And um, probably the reason for that is because, again, um, the conservatives, if you kind of really break down their belief systems, they tend to have um, conservative sexual values. So for example, you know, concepts like virginity pledges or uh, you know, ideas that they're fond of. Uh, th they also um, tend to be more opposed to immigration. And foreigners are a leading source, at least in centuries past, foreigners were a leading source of uh, exotic germs for which we had no natural defenses. So that's, it's speculated that that could be another factor behind why uh, people who uh, are more cons conservative in their political ideology, why uh, they tend to be opposed to, to immigration. Conservatives also tend to be very tradition bound. Uh, they tend to be a little bit uh, more uh, rigid about following religious doctrine. And again, a lot of religious practice, practices may help to protect against infection. So that's um, the, the leading theory uh, as to why you um, see this association. But in general, even in large survey studies, they've, uh, they've shown this link between uh, germophobia and xenophobia. So for example, there was a, a, a paper actually that's about to be published. And I think uh, uh, they looked at 2,000 Danes and uh, 1,200 Americans, representative samples from both countries. And they found that, uh, that opposition to immigration in increased in dir direct proportion to uh, the disgust sensitivity of the individual. Another group uh, did a study of um, 25,000 Americans. The study was done at the time of the 2008 um, presidential election between John McCain, a more conservative candidate, of course, and, and Barack Obama. And they found that uh, the more disgust sensitive the person, the more likely they w would vote for John McCain. And they actually showed the proportion of votes that went to McCain in each state. It was based on like the average disgust sensitivity of the state based on individual respondents to the survey. Mm -hmm.